Welcome back to GMA 3. 20 years ago, Scott Peterson was convicted of killing his wife, Lacey, who was eight months pregnant. Peterson was originally sentenced to death, a ruling which was later overturned and changed to life without parole. We all remember this case well. Mm -hmm. Scott Peterson was back in front of a judge this week. Peterson's legal team requesting new DNA testing on certain items in an effort to clear his name. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth with details. A pivotal day in convicted killer Scott Peterson's efforts for a new trial. The 51 year old appearing virtually in court. Thank you, Your Honor. But after several hours of deliberation, Judge Elizabeth Hill mostly rejecting his legal team's bid to retest 14 items they argue are related to the murder of his wife Lacey and their unborn son. Allowing only a single piece of evidence, the duct tape found on Lacey's pants, to be further analyzed. This case cries out for further investigation for their forensic investigation, including DNA testing of physical items that may lead to exculpatory evidence and or leads to possible suspects. The Los Angeles Innocence Project argued some items could be connected to Lacey's 2002 murder, like a bloodstained mattress in a burned out van found the morning after Lacey disappeared and a hammer and glove from a robbery just across the street from the Peterson home. We look at the original investigation. We look to see if anything was missed or overlooked. But Judge Hill said the evidence presented wasn't enough to warrant a need to retest and that some of the items were unavailable. On any of these items, they are public and they would have, if we found DNA at all, there's no way to say that it got there during the commission of this crime. Um, just the presence of DNA doesn't indicate a crime. And our many thanks to Kana for that report. Let's bring in now our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. Dan, good to see you. Thank you. So the judge rejected all but one of Peterson's attorney's requests for a new DNA test. What does this say about the argument? It says that the judge really wasn't giving much credence uh, to the defense's argument. There were a lot of different reasons as to why the other evidence uh, the judge said wouldn't be tested. Either chain of custody uh, issues, the, uh, the DAs don't have the evidence. It's not in the custody of the government uh, anymore. And other explanations. This is the one piece, this tape, was because it was an item that had been tested previously. There was some DNA on it, but the testing back in 2004 wasn't sensitive enough to detect it. So the judge basically saying, all right, now we've got this new kind of DNA testing. Let's let them do it. But I don't really know exactly how it's going to be a, a make or break issue in, in the case with that single piece of evidence. Mm. It, it seems like this is obviously a long shot, as you mentioned, but it seems like the, the Innocence Project doesn't just take up cases. They must feel like there's some merit to this. They were docked pretty heavily in that ruling by the judge. Uh, but how likely is it that one piece of evidence could actually make the difference here? Uh, I don't think it's likely at all, because let's even assume they find someone else's DNA on the tape, right? This is tape that was, you know, in the water, in the bay, that also doesn't address all of the evidence that was presented against Scott Peterson, right? I mean, remember there was, you know, there was DNA, there was physical evidence, there was him changing his alibi, there was the fact that he told uh, his mistress that his wife was gone before she went missing. I mean, the, the amount of evidence against Scott Peterson, where the body was found, right near where he was fishing that day. Possible motives and all of this. All of it. I mean, you know, there's so many different pieces of evidence that everything else would ignore. And so, look, in my personal opinion, I think the LA Innocence Project made a mistake in taking this case, but you're right that when they take a case, it's taken seriously. And I think that is what ultimately led to the judge saying, we're gonna even allow this one piece of evidence to be retested. Does it damage so their credibility, so sorry about that, but does it damage their credibility when they take up cases that you feel like are far-fetched? Absolutely. I mean, look, I think they damaged their credibility when they got involved in the O.J. Simpson case on behalf of the defense. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they've damaged their credibility here. They would say, well, it's just a local chapter. It's not the National Innocence Project. But, you know, when you're the Innocence Project, you do a lot of good work, right? Important work. You've got to be careful about the cases you pick. And you ought to be picking the ones where you really have got evidence of actual innocence, not the maybes and could be's and we'd like to see what other evidence they might have. What happens next? So they're gonna test uh, the one piece. Uh, the question's gonna be exactly how, right? The judge has set another date for a hearing if the two sides can't agree exactly on how the testing's gonna occur. But that's gonna happen. We'll see what the results are. And you know, if there's anything to argue from that piece of uh, tape, expect the defense to be back in court saying, 
we want more. We are watching. Yeah, we, everybody, mm -hmm. all eyes on this. Dan Abrams, we yep. appreciate you. Thanks, Thank you. as always, yep. for being with us.